Welcome to the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar today. Uh, I want to talk to you about um, how to increase profits and grow your business better. Uh, one of my good friends and a, a, a coach in this area, a speaker in this area is Scott Barhold. And Scott's actually created several tools to help businesses really end up with uh, more money in their company in the profit line of their company and to help them grow their company even faster than you ever thought possible. He's a great marketer. He's a great accountant ish. No, I shouldn't say ish. I really should say, you know, he's a guy that, that can help you not pay the IRS or KGB or whatever they call those people uh, more money than they should. <laughs> and Scott has touched the nation. I mean, literally all 50 States he's been in uh, communicating to, uh, folks uh, about how to uh, manage their money better and so that they actually can grow their business faster. Scott, thanks for being on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. So I want to get into this concept of um, how you, well, you've created this, this resource uh, for people in QuickBooks. And I want to get into what, what motivated that and, um, and, what would someone experience when they, they do get a hold of that program? All right. So um, I'm a profit and growth expert. We work with small business owners to help them increase profits, reduce taxes, and keep more money in the bank to run and grow their business. As I traveled around the country and saw people come into the rooms, the same things become, became evident. There's three core competencies to every business. Marketing, accounting, and production production. Those are the only three. We call it mapping your business. Most business owners are excellent at the production side. In fact, if you've ever read the, the book, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber, there's a line in there that says, most small businesses are started by a technician that had an entrepreneurial seizure. It means when you get into business, you're really good at what you do. You have the passion, desire, and probably the... And if you talk to a true entrepreneur, even a short period of time, it doesn't take long for them to start talking about their passion, their business, what they do. So most business owners can do a little bit of the marketing. They're really good at the production, and most of them hate the accounting side. In fact, as I traveled across the country to 48 different states and saw all these people, 95% of the room, you'd ask the question, how many of you come from an accounting background? Very, very few, less than one half of 1%. And then when you ask, well, how many of you uh, took additional uh, education or additional training to use QuickBooks? Oh, no, I just got thrown into it. Um, you know, my spouse said I'm better at computers than he is, so he has me do it. Or my spouse says I'm better, she makes me do it, right? It, you're not putting in qualified information. Now, why do we have this accounting side? It's a third of the practice that we do. Imagine if you would, a three-legged bar stool and balancing your business on the top of that bar stool, not balancing, but setting it up. If all three legs are equal, everything stands firm. But if one of those legs was substantially shorter, what's going to happen to anything that you set onto that stool? It's going to fall off. And most business owners can do the marketing and the production, but they miss the accounting. And most business owners today are so busy working in their business, they don't have time to work on their business. So that's why this video course was created, because nobody has time to read the book to train you on how to do QuickBooks. It's this thick. And if you've ever tried to read the instruction manuals for some of these software programs, Excel and things, it doesn't help you. So a click-by-click, step-by-step video resource that will teach you exactly what you need to do. And it's not like it's a four-hour war and peace. The cool thing about it is it was created with the non-accountant business owner in mind. It was put together to help the non-accountant business owner say, look, I need to know how to set up a customer correctly. You watch an eight-minute video on how to set up a customer a two minute video of how to create an invoice and get it billed, uh, a three minute video on how to receive the money into the bank. It's four hours of video, but it was broken. It was created not to watch it from beginning to end like the Godfather. It was brought, it was put together to put 
to, to have you watch it in segments, kind of like the old Encyclopedia Britannica that sat on your shelf at home. You take out the volume you needed, look at what you did, look at what you need, read it, research it, get what you need, then take the book and put it back. Same thing. This was put together to get people the information quickly, easily, and, and make them more effective at their business and overcome some of the shortcomings. That's why we created this. That's, that's really good. One of the things that I'm curious, when you, uh, when you put this together and the, the completed work, if somebody gets a hold of it, are, what, what do you think they're going to be able to walk away with? I mean, what do you feel like people are going to be able to uh, have as a result from going through the, your program so that at the end of it, you know, they can say, that was really a massive benefit to me. It was better than having to go through a six hour training course and listen to some the guy that thinks he's a, a magician or something, you know, and, and, and it plays a game show in the middle of that thing. <laughs> okay, you're Sorry. killing my stick, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, well, um, one of the things that they're going to walk away with is confidence that they have the information that they can rely on. Remember, we're putting together your accounting information. These are financial reports. Not only do you rely on them to do your taxes, but your business is communicating to you all the time. So you're going to have confidence that what you have in front of you will help you make better business decisions. That would be the number one. Number two, peace of mind. So that when you are finished with this, you have the peace of mind that you can use this information to help you and to help your business you'll make more sound decisions. Uh, think about QuickBooks or any accounting software for the matter. Uh, every receipt, every transaction, every, every hotel bill, every you do, that tro those transactions, that's a big box of receipts. And I got to tell you, I still have people that have the shoebox method. Shoebox method. At the end of the year, they hand me two shoeboxes filled with receipts and I got to go through them and enter them. This doesn't work. Uh, Pat, are you a sports guy? <laughs> you know, I'm not, I, I am like the mental amoeba when it comes to sports. I have, I, but my I, mind picks up is like Velcro crow for like really useless information. So no. <laughs> okay. But if I made you pick a sports team that you, I could wave my magic wand and you would be the coach. Okay. So I'm going to piss off somebody just because I live in the Dallas Fort Worth area. So I probably am going to be considered a, a Cowboys fan. So go okay. ahead. So let's just say that I had the power that I could wave my magic wand and make you the coach of the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> and all the salary that came with it and all that good stuff. But the deal is I'm not going to let you see the player's stats or the schedule till three months after the season's over. How do, good do you think you could be as a coach? Uh, let's just say I would be very short-lived with uh, Jerry Jones in the world. <laughs> I'm sure you would. But isn't it amazing that that's how most businesses, business owners run their business? They take their, their papers, they file them in file cabinets. At the end of the year, they send it to their accountant who does their tax return. And three months after the year is over, then they get to take a look and see how they actually performed. How good can you be as a business owner? I know when I talk to businesses all the time, Hey, you know, I want to talk to you about your accounting. I'm a profit and growth expert. Oh, I have my accounting taken care of. Oh, well, what does that mean? How often do you meet with your accountant? Every year we get our taxes done. We send them over to the accountant. Now, what they're doing is they're saying they have an accountant and they think they have an accountant, but what they really have is a tax preparer. Now, before I upset any tax preparers out there, I want you to understand tax preparers are very educated, very specialized, perform a valuable function, and they do a great job for their clients. But they are to the accounting industry, the tax preparer is to the accounting industry, what the coroner is to the medical industry. If all you have is a tax preparer and it's only happened once, <clears throat> once a year, by the time you get your stuff to the tax preparer, it's too late. Think about the coroner. They don't have any ability to bring the client back to life. The tax preparer has no ability to fix your tax problems. All they can do is report what you did. Compare that to a physician, primary care physician. Think about the last time you went to go see the doctor. They bring you in after your ample weight in the waiting room. They bring you in, they put you on a scale. They measure your weight, your height, 
your blood pressure, your respirations, your pulse. And they're taking you as an individual and comparing you to an established norm. And then they put you on a program. If they find that you're outside the realm of healthy, they put you on a program to get you back in line. That's what we do as a profit and growth expert. As a matter of fact, one of the programs we offer is a business assessment. We don't compare you to just how you did last year or last month or last season. We compare your company to the top company in your industry, to the top 10 actually. And we take a look at your business and see with 20 different financial ratios, we take a look at your business, see where you're doing well, where you need to improve, and then we help put you on a plan to make your company more healthy. And it's called a business assessment. But if you're only bringing your company to your tax preparer, they can't fix anything. There's no ongoing improvement. And that's why we do some of this. It's so important that business owners realize this. And, and many don't. It's fear of the unknown. They don't want to look silly. They don't want to be embarrassed because they don't know this stuff. Or they just don't know that they don't know that they need to do this stuff. That's why we offer it. It's not to say, I got gotcha. you. It's to say, hey, look, this is where we are. Where do you want to be? Right. And that's what we created that. I'm, I'm real curious, though, uh, Scott. I, I, I hear what you're saying. And, and um, I think about the the folks that they they really need quickbooks but they don't know that they need your training they, they don't realize it what would be some of the the classic if i could say problems that people would have that uh that would be like flares huge flares that say you need to get better at quickbooks or get somebody to get better at QuickBooks on your team? Okay. Um, there are many different indicators, warning signs. Uh, so here would just be a few things. If somebody asked you for financial reports, could you be able to prepare a financial report literally by the end of the day? If you can't answer yes to that, then you're going to need some help with your QuickBooks. Now, why would somebody need financial reports? Maybe you're going for a loan, you're looking to buy another business, sell another business, getting credit, establishing credit, building another location. Insurance companies like to know some of these things. So that would be one. Uh, two, if you call the bank every day to find out how much money is in the bank, and then when the business, when the balance gets low, you just stop calling the bank, this is an indicator of a problem. <laughs> right? Because the bank is right for a very short period of time, but they don't know things coming in or going out. You may have written a lot of checks. Uh, if you're a company that's continually uh, finding uh, bounced checks, non-sufficient funds fees, uh, these are indicators of problems. These are some of the things that you would definitely want to have uh, somebody in your QuickBooks, having an accounting system put together to help give your company peace of mind. Well, what's interesting is that a lot of what you're, you're saying, I, I know a lot of business owners that they really don't pay attention to the books as much as they pay attention to the um, accounts receivable, so to speak. I mean, it's, is there income? And if there's income, well, I'm doing something right. <laughs> but <laughs> to a point, I, that's true. To a point, and I'll, I'll give you a case study. Uh, I got called from a friend of mine who had other friends, husband and wife, running a restaurant. And they were just always frustrated about money. He thought there was plenty. She thought there wasn't enough. She was doing the accounting. He was running the restaurant. And he, uh, my buddy Joe brought me in and he said, hey, could you just take a look and help these folks out? So I went in there and I took a look. Now, this is a restaurant. And I took a look at just a four month sample. It was the last four months. And I just happened to notice that consistently, 47% of the money he brought in was going out in something called cost of goods. Now, for those of you not in the restaurant industry, that means 47 cents of every dollar that customers spent that came into the restaurant, for every, for every dollar coming in, 47 cents was going out the door on the plate whatever the food he was serving. That was 47 cents. And 49 cents of every dollar coming in was going back out the door 
in the wages for the cook, the hostess, the waiters, the waitresses, support staff. So you have 47%, 49%. That leaves 4% of every dollar coming in, four cents of every dollar coming in. He had a 12% mortgage. So what he was selling, about 12% was his monthly mortgage. Now, you don't have to be a rocket scientist here. If, if you have 47%, 49%, and 12%, you're spending $1.08 for every dollar coming in. How long can you do this? As long as you have money in the bank. And every time he got in trouble, he just thought, oh, I take a loan out against my home equity loan. First thing we had to teach him is when you find yourself in a hole, the first thing you got to stop, you got to do is stop digging. Right? Now, he doesn't know restaurants. He, he managed one for a long time. He wasn't in charge of the accounting. He didn't know where those numbers should be. I've worked with a lot of restaurants. I know a good restaurant should be sitting between 28 and 33% of cost of goods sold. I know that labor should be sitting at about 25%. And I know if you're out of, out of the realm there, things need to change. And then there's quite a few different things that we can do. Find cheaper vendors, uh, raise prices, you know, what are we paying our waiters and waitresses? Do you have too many people on? Are you not, are you not regulating uh, labor for your busy times? Right? These are just things that I would look at, but he didn't know to do that. All he knew is he was, in, he was spending money and he thought there should be money left at the end. And it was because he was running it through his passion. And unfortunately, when you run things with your passion, passion and pride go together. And many times people don't have time or they get embarrassed when they see that things aren't going right. So that's why many times it's so important to have that third party just to, to bounce ideas off of, save you from your own, uh, your own desperation. Yeah. And it's also great to start to take a look at things. And here's another thing, just a free tip here for you. If you have somebody, write down your goals. Tell them to your problem growth expert, your accountant, and then monthly, quarterly, right? Sit down with your, that person and let's see how you're working towards getting to your goals. Are you moving to or are you moving from? And then we can put in correctionable paths to help you move in the direction you want to move. That's that excellent. Helpful? Yeah, that, that's really good. The thing I'm, I'm curious about is uh, what... I want to say, what could it cost a company not to have uh, somebody that actually knows QuickBooks well? Well, it's, it's like anything, right? It's the definition of cost versus price. Uh, price is what you pay to have something. Cost is what you pay when you didn't do it when you should have. Uh, I'll just give you an example. I know we talked last night and since we spoke, I got an email uh, from somebody and they were asking questions about, well, I travel a lot for my business. I'm on the road quite a few days a year and I recommended that you use the GSA per diems, not the actuals. Well, uh, this person called me up and said, look, how do you, in your QuickBooks, how do you, in your accounting, qualify the difference? because I'm spending it on my credit card so I can see that. Do I just add this in as an additional expense? And we went through how to do the process so that you stay in compliance. And that's an important part of this. Let's talk about that word compliance because we don't just do an accounting and bookkeeping because we think it's the greatest thing. Business owner, entrepreneur, solopreneur, our job, we are required to keep certain records and required to retain them for a certain period of time. So if you don't have these records, you'll be found out of compliance. So before I go any further, just as, as a fun thing, Pat, if, if I gave you the word compliance and I asked you to come up with a definition in your own words, what would you say the definition would be? The word compliance, very simple. We probably learned it when we were in about eighth grade. What do you think it means? Well, that's funny because a thought that went through my head is not very PC. Um, it, compliance is, uh, well, the word that I, I think of is submission. It's, okay. it's obedience. Great answer. I get following the rules, knowing the rules, doing what 
what you're supposed to, meaning all are all right. Um, I'll never forget when I was in college, I had a, a professor who came to me and when we talked about the word compliance, he said, I'm going to give you a definition you'll never forget. I said, what is it? He said, compliance is the least amount you can do and not get fined for it. Think about that. IRS, Department of Revenue, all these different places. If you don't have the records you're supposed to have, it gets disallowed. You lose. It's not fair. Tough. That's the law. So when you, when you are a business owner and you're doing the very best you can, and I get it, but the very best you can, if you're not spending time looking up to make sure your company is in compliance with what you're doing and how you're doing it, how can you possibly be expected to pass in an audit? And I'll be honest with you, the auditors count on the fact that we're not doing the research, we're just doing the best that we can. And that doesn't go up. And, and if you've ever heard of it, we probably learned this when we were eight years old. Ignorance of the law is no defense. So what can it cost you? Compliance. The word we just talked about. What, forget accounting for a minute. What are the other areas of compliance that we have in our business life? Me, I think of OSHA, HIPAA, um, uh, every kind of uh, ERISA, I mean, different kinds of regulatory bodies that can fine you for not being um, compliant in those areas, the FMLA laws, uh, things of that nature. I mean, that, that's where my mind goes, but what, what are you thinking? Well, you can be fined, which you just brought up. Can they shut down your business? Probably, probably. Yes, right? Uh, HIPAA. Can the individual doctors be fined? I don't know. You yeah. tell me. I think so. Yeah. Yes, they can. So the IRS, they're no different. Failure to comply, you can be fined, you can be sanctioned, you can be closed down, the owners can be held personally responsible, the bookkeepers, the accountant, right? These folks can be held responsible. And you can't say, but I didn't know, or the boss told me to. So your question to me was, what can happen if you don't have somebody doing this? It can be catastrophic. Now, you've seen that around the country, right? I mean, in the, the, we've talked before, and you'd always tell me these horror stories of people that came in and went, well, you know, we got into trouble, and the IRS came in, and they fined us, they fined us uh, $186,000 or something. And I'm like, did they even make that much that year? Doesn't matter. Because if the assets of the business are not enough to cover the tax lien, they will sell the assets and then go after the owners personally. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. So, you know, just I want to make sure that people know uh, they can, the, the link to uh, accessing uh, Scott's program is down below. And I'm just curious, you know, because people want, you know, before they even go there, they're going, is it, is it, is it really expensive? Is it something that is easy to implement and get a, and and get in place and what kind of support will they have are there any things that you will do that will uh, make it even a better value for them uh, to take action today well um, we do have a couple things for you there first of all uh, you can go out onto the out onto the thing and you'll see that you can buy each of the individual modules there's four of them for forty nine dollars each if you get all four of them together it's 167. So you're saving some money there. Uh, the other thing is I talked to you about the business assessment. Uh, that's one of the product that we sell 497 over and over and over again. I believe it's so important that anybody that mentions you, Pat, uh, and they get in touch with us. Uh, our website is on the site. Our, our phone number is on the website link. Uh, if they call us and they mention you, we're going to give them that $500 assessment for free. So it won't cost them a thing. Uh, and then also when you're looking for accountants and bookkeepers, making sure that you have folks that, uh, that are qualified and know what they do. Uh, there's another video link. You'll see it talks about the, the link for the QuickBooks Home Study course. And then you're going to see a little sign that says profitable or non-profitable. It's kind of like got the up-down arrows going. Uh, 
on that if you click on that there's also a thing it's an introduction of how we help business owners it's kind of a very non-confrontational way to see what we do for you what services we offer how we can help you and how we help your business move forward remember my job is to help your business increase profits reduce taxes and keep more money in the bank to run and grow your business that's what we do yeah i believe that well folks i'm gonna i'm gonna let this go at this time because i want to make sure that if you're trying to grow your business and you've got accounting as a challenge you know either you or your spouse or some the person that is doing your accounting is uh, not giving you uh, timely information and really helping you grow your business uh, then then click on the link below get the information uh, give the education to whoever needs it if it's a, a you know spouse or the husband uh, if it's uh, the the person that is doing uh, some of the bookkeeping uh, then they need to know how to do it better uh, so that you're in compliance uh, but then I would really take advantage of Scott's offer. I mean, for, for what it costs 160 something dollars to invest in this program, you're going to receive the training you need to give you the results that you want. And I guarantee you, uh, the fines you'll avoid are, uh, well, th those will be a lot more than $167. So, uh, anyways, um, Scott, I, I wanted to say thanks for being on the show today. I wanted to make sure that we talked about this resource that's being used around the country and promoted around the country by lots of different folks. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and, and you're, they're getting real re results. The people are learning what they need to know, getting the education, getting the results of uh, uh, more profits, less taxes. And, and then you add that uh, analysis in there as a bonus, which I, I really appreciate you doing that for my listeners. And I just encourage you folks, this is something you don't want to just walk by. We're at the time period where you need this stuff. And uh, I'm glad that I was able to get Scott uh, on the line today and uh, on the show so that you could really grow from what he's trying to share with you. Uh, again, uh, thanks so much for Scott for being on the show and folks, We'll be with you again next time. I look forward to sharing with you great ideas to help you activate uh, your life and your business uh, to create the destiny that you want. This is Pat Dewar. Make sure you, you uh, email me if you have any questions it's as well. Patrick at doersuccess.com. That'll be down below as well. Uh, you could also like us on Facebook and such to keep in touch. And again, thank you so much. Take action that will change everything.